what was your experience in the military like? Do you hold any resentment towards Dank Wheelie? Ever gotten arrested for stunting? And the spiciest question of them all. What is up guys? It is your least favorite moto vlogger, Brian636 here. Today, I was feeling a little bit down and I had realized I hadn't ridden in a couple days and that's probably my problem. We are on the 2003 636 that we just did a full restoration on. I asked you guys on Instagram last night if you had any questions for me and I picked about 10 or 11 of them pretty randomly because there was so many and I really want to just ride around, talk a little bit, hopefully answer these questions to the best of my abilities and hopefully just clear my head and do a little bit of therapy with y'all. If I didn't get to your question, I'm sorry in advance. I'll link my Instagram down there if you guys have a question for me next time I do this, you know. And for everybody that's new here, please do hit that subscribe button according to my youtube analytics like 70 percent of you guys are unsubscribed which is crazy please hit the subscribe button truly the reason we get to ride this thing around and just talk right now we are in lexington and laverne in the west side and i got some questions to answer so let's do this a little bit of off-road and honor so much art around here, man. So much talent, just hidden talent like that with these graffiti artists. All right, guys, we are not gonna beat around the bush at all here. Let's get right into it. Astronaut516 asks, explain some suspension stuff. What do you do for stoppies? What do you do for drifting? I feel like this is something that not a lot of people have talked about. And I know it's only the first question, but I'm probably gonna stop and talk you through it really quick here. Just because I don't think I've ever really talked about it, to be honest. As you know, the 2003 to 2004 636 is considered probably the ultimate stoppy bike drifting bike you know a lot of bikes can drift but as far as stoppies go this is the one that when we went to am stoppy school six out of the seven guys that crossed that 500 line were on 2003 to 2004 636 that's why i say it's the king of stoppies but whatever so suspension, this of course is in a stock form. Now the 2003, 2004 is infamous for having really weak OEM forks. So when you're talking about doing stoppies, you're putting so much weight and inertia on that front end that these have a tend to snap. Now, if you're not rolling any crazy type of stoppies, you don't gotta really worry about much, you really don't. But if you are, you should probably upgrade to an 0506 front end or an 09 plus front end. Now, as far as rear suspension goes, I can honestly say I've never really screwed with the 2003 to 2004's stock rear suspension. Other than that though, you're good. Let's keep it going. Big question, Nash. Lopez J13 asks, where's the Supermoto app, my guy? I can say this was probably one of the most asked questions I got of them all, so I knew I had to sneak it in. I actually ended up selling my Supermoto to help fund that new Harley build that I did. Am I saying, do I not miss a Supermoto? Absolutely. Am I saying I'm not gonna build another one? Absolutely not. I'm definitely going to be building a new Supermoto. However, that one started to give me problems as far as overheating and stuff like that. So I'll probably look into something like a CRF 450. Possibly have that be like one of my winter projects or something like that. Just because, oh my God, do I miss rolling stoppies on that front end. The supermoto front end, period, is just awesome. All right, if you're not going to go, I'm going to go. You look familiar. Yeah, I, remember, <laughs> I was gonna say, man, <laughs> it's six three six. Come on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll put it up one time. Somebody asked you like that, put it in the air for me. You got it. I got peer pressured into it. What can I say? What was I saying? Supermoto, yes. Is it coming again? Absolutely. Is it has it been gone for the past, I don't know, almost full year? Yeah. Oh, they're having a fucking fire. What in the hell is going on? The beautiful, beautiful west side. Let's get to our third question. Nick Wheelies asks, how did you build your bike slash stunt scene into what it is now in Chicago? Nick, that's a great question, dude, because that's something that I feel like a lot of people take for granted in whatever city they're really in. You know, cities like St. Louis or, I don't know, Dallas, Miami, Chicago. It took a lot, a lot of people before us, you know? That's why I always try to talk about respecting the OGs and to really, Pave the way of not only making this more acceptable, more organized, more safe, more inclusive. And in these cities, it really has become that, mostly just because of the scene and the riders that came from these cities before us. So if, if you had a bunch of knuckleheads all out on their own, 
popping wheelies, flicking off cops in your city, Ooh. and there's no organization, and there's no weekly rides, and there's no, you know, there's nothing like that, then yeah, it's probably going to be a, a lot more dangerous learning how to stunt. It's probably going to be a lot more unorganized. The police are probably not going to look at it the same way. So truly, I ought to give that up, that one up to not only the guys before me, but the current guys that are helping lead lead these rides and instruct the new riders on how to safely do things. You know, because at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that your MSF instructor just can't teach you that these old school street riders need to be the ones that teach. And we're really blessed here in Chicago to have some, uh, some good leadership. Hopefully you guys can go out, find your lots to practice in, help bring in new guys, young blood to, you know, bring up and liven up the sport and create something really special going in your city, wherever you're from. Great question, Nick. Gleason underscore 22. Is there somewhere online where you can find the info about all these upcoming stunt rides? Oh my God, is that probably the most commonly asked question in the comments of my YouTube videos, especially on the big rides. Where the hell are you finding out and organizing all these huge rides? What is going on? And I think that kind of ties into our last question of how the scene's grown in some of these bigger cities. It really just has come down to the senior leadership, stamping a date, once a year, and the rest of the stunt community just kind of following suit and being in that city on that weekend. Now, how do you find out about that? Well, Facebook is a great place to start. There's, you know, always Facebook event pages for pretty much whatever event you're going to. And if there's not, um, it's orchestrated on Instagram as well, on YouTube. So if you're following a couple of these stunt pages, man, especially a couple, you know, stunt riders from all over the country, you'll see when things start to snowball, you know. Oh, okay, High Side Joe just showed up in St. Louis. Seabird just showed up in St. Louis. Oh, man. Senders only just showed up there. You know, whatever. They're all starting to show up there. I bet you something's going on there that weekend. I mean, if you really haven't seen any of the posts or whatever, you know, as far as like when ROC is run. So once again, what an awesome question, man. I know that that's been a pretty demanded question over the years of how do you find out about this stuff? Wonder what's going on, man. The news is here. Douglas Park. One of the oldest West Side Parks here. One of the big four. There's Douglas, Humble, Garfield and Columbus. And before I get to the next question, I know a million people are probably already asking because they have before. It's a Steely. It's a magnet on the back of my phone. It sticks to the back of gas tanks. Of course, if it's metal. But I get people asking me that all the time and I'm not associated with them at all. But Benjamin Bowman asks, what's the sketchiest, most dangerous ride out you have been to? What's the sketchiest or most dangerous ride out I've been to? I think that hands down has to go to uh, Miami and for MLK ride out. That's just, I've been there two or three times. Three times if you include GVO, which is the ride that replaced MLK. Uh, I think the later MLK is probably like 2017 or 2018, but it's truly like an all out war against motorcycles. Like the city, the state troopers, everybody is looking for bikes going into the city. There's helicopters just tracking the pack the whole time. One of our friends, Sal, got robbed by other riders at the ride. Guns pulled on him and everything. It's just a really, uh, it's a sketchy environment, man. So you, if you have a street legal bike like I have, like a, a street bike or something like that, it might not be as sketchy, but they're probably going to try to tackle you too, man. So it's just a bad, it's a bad place to be. There's so many ATVs and dirt bikes and it's a sketchy one, man. They're pulling over trucks with trailers on the I-95, I think it is, and like stopping them and, and seizing bikes just going into the city. And you couldn't get your bike out until the, the next Tuesday. That's probably been the sketchiest ride I've been to. And I haven't been to MLK, like I said, since 2018. So it's been almost four years now because it happens in January of 20. 2018. I had to stop to read this one. Cool Wells, there any reason you don't show your face? I think the main reason at this point now is truly just because I've gone this far without showing it. I think that's the main reason at this point. It, it's what I'm used to. It's what I'm comfortable with. It's nice having that layer of anonymity when I meet people or when I'm out to dinner or whatever. I just, I like having that layer. I like that the bike is more well-known than my face is. How's it going? I like the scooter. I'd probably say that that's the biggest reason. Just being an, uh, a little bit more anonymous and a little bit more able to fly under the radar when it comes to public settings. I always love when people kind of have to ask, hey, are you Brian? You know, not really know right off the bat. It's a little bit more personal connection. You want to trade? You want to trade bikes? Come on. You want to try it?
<laughs> you sure you don't want to try? <laughs> My phone stays right there. We're in the neighborhood of Pilsen. The neighborhood's gone through a lot of change in recent years. It was a very, very Hispanic community, but it's been through a lot of gentrification. <laughs> this can this can do it too. Yeah. <laughs> another question in with my buddy here. Mentor Moto asks, what was your experience in the military like? Because I have had so many people ask so many questions about it. If you look through my videos and you go way deep back, like into the pocket bike days, there is an edit from my old platoon. But I guess I'll tell you a little bit about it. I joined the Marines, fresh out of high school. Um, I think my mom co-signed for me when I was 17. Went to boot camp really soon after my 18th birthday. Only had a couple months in between high school graduation and actually leaving for, for boot camp. And I signed a uh, 0300 infantry contract. So 18 years old, fired up, ready to go. Loved guns, loved, loved my country, and uh, no intentions on uh, ever using the GI Bill or really any intentions of anything past the Marines. I thought that was gonna be, that was gonna be it for me. So I went to boot camp, I went to SOI where they train you how to be um, a good infantryman, learn every type of combat skill that the Marine Corps deems fit after th three months of boot camp. It's like a two month school. And you'll get a designated job there. So you could be a rifleman, you could be a mortarman, you could be a machine gunner, you can be an assaultman who works with like uh, demolitions. And that's pretty much about it. And then, uh, so after that five or six months worth of training, you know, boot camp and SOI, I got sent to my unit. I was with uh, 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. And uh, man, about two months after being there, or three months after being there, I tried out for the Scout Sniper Platoon and uh, got accepted into the Scout Sniper Platoon and pretty much just loved the community and my platoon and kind of the tight bond that I formed with those guys. These are guys that I still keep in contact with to this day. Um, a couple of them will be at my wedding. Just like guys that I can truly call on for anything. I guess I don't really talk about it all that much because all the skills and trades and all that stuff that I learned doesn't translate into civilian life almost at all. Stuff like leadership and self-accountability and stuff like that, that translates into the civilian world. Um, but other than that, I wasn't like a, a, a helicopter mechanic that you know, went and started working on helicopters after he got out, or an armor who worked on guns and, you know, got out and could do that same skill in real life. Only real thing that my job really translated to would be police work, and, and that just didn't seem very fitting for me. Being in the Scout Sniper Platoon and being a, a police officer, I know I would be writing a lot more traffic tickets and screwing over a lot more, you know, Americans than I would be actually taking out bad guys in a SWAT team or something, you know, so. That's kind of the cut, dry, dirty. I did four years, deployed twice with them. Would 18-year-old me do it again? Absolutely. 28, 29-year-old Brian, looking to do it again? No, I'm, I'm good. I, I took away a lot of great lessons. I took a lot, a lot of, you know, lifelong friends away from it. But other than that, I started to fall back in love with riding when I was in the Marines. And um, the more I was away from my bike, the more I knew I just wanted to ride and kind of be on my own time. So that's the reason I didn't sign the dotted line again for another four years. To everybody that has asked me questions about it in the comments and whatever, sorry I haven't got back to you. It's kind of a long story. Great question, dude. Ooh, ooh, this is a spicy one. Old Gray Beast asks, ever gotten arrested for stunting? The quick downright dirty answer to that is yes. If you have been around in the stunt community for more than a couple years and you're going to parking lots or you're riding streets or whatever, the chances of you having a noise complaint called on the lot or having a cop pull you over for doing a wheelie on the street or whatever, the chances are pretty, pretty good that that's going to happen to you over many of years. I would probably go out on a limb here and say 9 out of 10 stunters have had some type of interaction with a cop, whether it's a ticket, a warning or yeah an arrest for you know something like reckless driving <laughs> which is exactly what i got arrested for reckless driving it wasn't a fun time i don't suggest it however if it's something that you truly love which 10 out of 10 
stunters truly love stunt riding or else they probably wouldn't be breaking their bones and going broke over it. It's not something that's going to stop you in your tracks. It just, it is what it is. It's part of it. I, I try to take every measure to respect the police and respect the law as much as humanly possible and not to create a bunch of unnecessary noise when we are at a parking lot and practicing and whatnot. So, but yeah, that is definitely part of the reality of stunt riding, man. <laughs> another great question and another great reason that I just, when I was getting out of the military and you know, the, you go to the transition classes and they tell you what your job translates to and my only job that got translated to was police officer. I just couldn't do it. When I was, you know, in the Marines, I was already starting to get into stunt riding and starting to do wheelies and whatnot, so I knew it just probably wasn't the thing for me. The sun's starting to go down. It's starting to get a little chilly here. Speaking of getting chilly, we just released uh, misguided beanies that are like quadruple layer. They are the warmest beanie ever over on our website, and we still have the windbreakers and hoodies and fanny packs like I'm wearing right now over there as well. All great stuff to get you ready for the winter, so if you want it, be warm this winter or if you want to support the channel or both the link's down in the description you guys know what to do Let's take one more question before we get out of here uh, and the spiciest question of them all goes to this guy vathi asks do you hold any resentment towards dank wheelie now I, I it's literally been over a year now and i haven't really publicly said anything and i still have kind of held off on doing so just because in case there is any mending of this bridge or anything like that didn't want to speak out on his on his name or on his channel negatively but some of the stuff that has happened has has already came to light resent i don't think resent is the right word resentment i feel like that's like a long-term hatred no i don't am i disappointed in him as kind of the man he is yes did this let me see somebody's true colors yes absolutely um, the down and dirty was, you know, over a year ago now, he, he blocked me and unfollowed me and stopped sharing his location, stopped, pretty much cut everything off between us. And I looked at all this and I was just puzzled. Um, so I called him, called him, called him, finally got a hold of him and basically just said out I wasn't holding up my end of the friendship and I'm negative on his life. And it really caught me off guard. And I said, well, let's work on this, man. I'll work on it. You know, this and that okay and he said okay to that within a couple days it was right back to everything just blocked and pretty much cut off from it was really sucked it hurt man um and as time kind of went on when you're going to all these events you know other people you talk to each other and i, I kind of realized this wasn't a, a polarized thing like there's plenty of stunt riders that had similar interactions with him or similar just kind of petty handling of, of issues with him. So I, I didn't really speak out onto it at all and I still don't really want to just because I'm that kind of person that I hope that we get to mend things out one day. I almost feel like it is coming to that point of, I mean, he, he had to make a public video addressing why he has drama with so many people. Why is he getting pushed off his bike at events? And I would understand if there was one or two guys and you know, you had to clear the air with those, but we're talking whole teams of guys. We're talking multiple stunters. It's shitty, man. It sucks. Over the years in this community, man, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever had this happen to me over five, six, seven years. Any single one of these guys would drop their bike for you and help push it and put you up and all the things I literally did for that same guy and uh, do it in a heartbeat. But the way he's kind of handled this situation and not just my situation, but with multiple other people, it's unfortunate, man. It sucks. Hope the best for him. You know, as a, as a, as a YouTuber, I hope his channel does well. As a grown man, I hope he does mentally well because i think at the end of the day that might be the stemming issue here is he thinks people are out to get him or whatever and i have that same feeling sometimes as well just uneasiness so i hope the best for him but yeah do i trust him anymore no and do i think i could ever trust him again probably not and that's really unfortunate because in a pack of 200 people now there's 199 people that i that i trust and to all the guys who have spoken up on this publicly i give you a lot of credit because i just got I guess I just never really had it in me to want to talk about it. It's draining. It's literally just draining, emotionally draining. It sucks because my subscribers are his subscribers and vice versa. I don't have to pick between us. I love all you guys equally. On that note, I am going to take one more question just because I don't want to end on, on a less than happy note. Morales209.06 asks, where do you see yourself slash YouTube channel in 5, 10, or 15 years? This is something that I can honestly say I think about almost daily. I think the five year, I will still be here in Chicago making motorcycle videos. 
mostly stunt related and still owning a home here. In 10 years, I will probably still be making stunt videos, if not motorcycle videos, and most likely still be living here in Chicago. And that 15 year mark, I could be looking into something more adventure riding with a hint of wheelies here and there, or back to my track riding with a hint of really far back wheelies. Show those track guys how to do some stoppies and some wheelies, slash long riding videos. And I don't know if I will still be living here in Chicago in 15 years. A lot of things in this city that I absolutely love. There's a reason I moved back to this city once I was done with the military and it wasn't just because I had nowhere else to go. I wasn't held down by anything and I wanted to come back here because of the riding scene and just the city itself, like the people here, I love it. But in 15 years, if I have kids, will I really want to raise my kids in this city, in this environment? And that answer is absolutely not. I don't, I don't see myself having kids in the new, near future, but when I do have kids, I hope to have them out of this city. The city's taught me some amazing life lessons as well, just like the military, some hard lessons. My end goal is when I do have kids, I am moved out of the city. I'll always want to have, even if it's a little apartment with a half car garage for a bike or two here, I'll always want to have that in Chicago, but you know, living here full time, in between the winters, the crime, uh, the politics, all of that combined, um, I think eventually to, to have a second place to lay my head a little bit more full time would be nice. That would be desirable. But my heart will always be here in the city, 100%. And I'll always come here every summer and ride. I'll still be here hitting hoodie spots and you know, my heart will always be in this city. Man, what a great question. What a great group of questions, you guys. Like, there was hard ones in there. There was easy ones for me. There was ones that I had to recall a lot of history. And I can honestly say this channel and you guys are the reason that I can still maintain this lifestyle for now and hopefully in five years and 10 years and 15 years. I will always keep this a motorsports related channel. I've already been riding and making videos on bikes for more than half my life. I started when I was 13 and I'm coming up on my 30s really quick. I've literally spent more than half my life on YouTube and I don't regret it. It's it's formed me into who I am today, I guess. I've seen the platform change quite a bit too. And that's another thing that could d definitely change where I am in five, 10 or 15 years if the platform goes back to demonetizing people again. So I'll do one more really for you guys, just cause I feel like we're lacking this. Throw it back. And on that note, that really loud rev limiter coaster. It's been fun riding you, baby. I think you're going to a new home this weekend. I love you guys. I love you for your support over the years. I love you for making me into the person I am today. Chicago, watch out for each other, respect life. Riders, help each other. Men broken bridges. That guy that you have beef with or whatever, or drama, even if it's really petty, could be the guy that saves your life or throws a tourniquet on you or helps push you away in a sketchy situation. On that note, guys, this is your least favorite motovlogger, Brian636, signing out. I love y'all. Peace.